2013-2014 budget. This is our our first um, public hearing. We'll have one in two weeks, and then it'll go to the board for approval at that that board meeting in two weeks. So at this time, I'll turn over to Mr. Cox. If anybody in the audience has any questions or, or comments, <laughs> uh, <Even> to yourself. <laughs> Please, uh, after Mr. Cox is finished, we'll ask you to come to the podium, state your name, and keep your comments to, to two minutes at home. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Cox? Uh, Kimberly, since you have my phone number, uh, we're probably going to move through this kind of quick. Uh, certainly, uh, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Cox, 2013-2014 budget presentation. Uh, we always look at financial highlights for the year just ended. I'm going to point out one, uh, item number four. Uh, we're really proud of this. Uh, three years ago, the state uh, implemented a new uh, ratings program, uh, a value of... Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> Superior? <laughs> Nobody from Exemplary? Elsewhere. Superior? Uh, yeah, well, no, but I mean, <laughs> what you call that? But it, uh, anyway, the uh, the FAST program was implemented, and it's, an, it's a way to rate school districts based on 50% based on academic performance and 50% based on financial performance. We are one of only 11 school districts out of over 1,100 that have achieved the maximum five-star rating at all three years of this program. The 11 school districts have achieved that level. So we're very proud of that. The other thing is we're proud of the fact that we were able to balance our budget uh, the last two years after a $21.3 million reduction in state funding without any uh, consideration. Uh, we also compare our budget uh, to the state averages as a percent by function, uh, really helping us identify areas where our spending varies from the state. It helps guide us and uh, want to uh, shift our spending. Uh, this gives us direction as to where we may or may not want to be different from the state. And the one thing I'll point out here is that we're spending 62.1% of our budget in instruction compared to the state, 59.3%. That 2.8% difference in our budget uh, equates to $10 million more in spending going into instruction than if we were spending at the state average for instruction. Uh, so we're very proud of that. Our uh, our goal in our budget is to have to achieve ac excellent academic outcomes in a cost-effective manner. As we believe we're doing that, we're spending. Uh, we're able to to achieve excellent academic outcomes while spending, on average, eight hundred and thirty-seven dollars per student less than the state average. We also monitor our tax rate. Uh, we're proud of the fact that our tax rate is well below 21.1 cents below our peer district groups, the major districts around Conroe in our geographic area. So we're proud of that. Uh, strong fund balance is important to a school district. You can see that we've had steady growth in the fund balance. Uh, in fact, uh, Red areas indicate areas that have actually taken money out of our fund balance and performed construction uh, or capital projects without spending debt projects, and this has helped us manage our debt service tax rate. And looking at our fund balance uh, to assess if, if it's in the area that we'd like it to be in, uh, you can see we're projecting uh, 2013-14 budget of 369.1 million. We have an objective of maintaining a fund balance 
16 and 24 percent of the budget. This would put us with a high end of 88.6 million in our fund balance. We're currently projecting a fund balance of approximately 93 million. So a little over that high end, which gives that money. Uh, so we're definitely in the range. Property values. Uh, this is certainly an indication that Montgomery County is uh, in a great, very healthy economic environment. Uh, we're seeing uh, we've this year our assessed values have grown 8.6 percent, uh, almost two billion dollars. Really an amazing situation, and and it's uh, not surprising. Our local economy. Uh, there is a misconception here that that all of this growth results in massive new dollars to the school district. And what the general public generally doesn't understand is that the state, when, when our local taxes go up, the state then offsets their funding to us dollar for dollar in the following year. So it, it becomes a dollar for dollar reduction next year. Uh, and the reason is, as we all know, is the state is trying to achieve equitable funding across the state. So when our funding goes up, they take that money and they send it. It doesn't have the funding, local funding level that we have. Uh, so that's a bit of a, there's a bit of a, a misconception on the part of the, the public. Let me just clarify one thing. They take money that they would spend, send us over the top of our tax value away from us. We don't send them Chapter 41 money. Absolutely. I just want to, I just. Would Absolutely. We're still, get, we're still getting money from the state. Right. And I will point that out further later. That, that's uh, right. we're, we're def, we continue to receive money from the state. We simply will receive less. Uh, so uh, now I, I should point out that that does not, that happens in the general fund. It does not happen in debt service. We're still, we will always, as, a, as our other districts, uh, we're responsible locally to pay our local debt. Some districts do have wealth levels. So, no state. Uh, enrollment, see the trend continues to be upward, steadily upward. Uh, these are the actual enrollment numbers over the last 10 years or so. Uh, you, you can see that we're structuring this budget on a projected growth of 1,100 students. I will point out that even though our economy is very, very healthy in Montgomery County and in Conroe ISD specifically, uh, we are actually seeing a decline in enrollment growth. And this probably is related to the fact that we're not getting much new uh, new student growth out of the woodland because their construction has tomball. Uh, even though we're seeing a very healthy economy in Montgomery County, we are seeing growth across the district. Uh, we're not seeing the level of growth in, as far as Conroe SD goes. So, but we are seeing, we do project a healthy 1,100 students. Uh, for this coming uh, projected revenue uh, has, has been well reported uh, legislature returned about 75 percent of the funding that they cut years ago uh, this the interesting thing is they they front end loaded most of this funding uh, essentially all of this return money. so what we're seeing is a surge in and revenue in the first year, but we're going to see later on in this presentation that funding drops off dramatically in the second year. So we're going to have to preserve some of this funding to balance our budget second year of our biennium. Uh, <clears throat> that's the main issue there. Uh, once we realize that Funding was going to be very strong this year, and, and it is strong. 
Uh, we felt it was very important to sit down and identify the objectives that we wanted to achieve with this budget because we were going to have to make an allocation of, of resources. So we sat down, we identified five objectives. One, we wanted to meet the needs of the 2013-14 school year. We wanted to provide for a strong salary increase for Conroe ISD employees. We wanted to provide for additional safety and security. We wanted to preserve funding for 2014-15, as I mentioned minutes ago. And we wanted to provide a tax decrease for CISD patrons. <laughs> This is a detailed listing of the expenses uh, that were that are in the budget, which represent the growth in, in the budget. Uh, I'm not going to go through them uh, in detail. They're there. Uh, this presentation, by the way, will be on our uh, our website tomorrow. It'll be under the finance department on our website. So, available. Uh, but if there's any questions, uh, certainly address them after the This is a, on this presentation, you see nine, I will go back, 9.45 million is related to salary increase. Uh, the 3.25% is 8.9 million. The sub rate increase is 500,000. And then, the, then we have the health fund increase. Uh, which is two million, and this is a challenging area, but probably. Uh, and then our third item is additional personnel. Uh, that's for both the eleven hundred growth. Uh, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, these are the, this is a breakdown of that nine point two million. You can see that for the eleven hundred student growth, it's approximately 7.3 million. And then the other positions, other program additions are listed here. Uh, <clears throat> again, I was talking about five additional curriculum coaches, 11 comp ed teachers for elementary and five high school teachers for career and technology, additions of police for uh, safety and security issue. We talked about uh, the interest in increasing security in this area. And these are specifically targeted for the elementary intermediate campus. For the first time, we're adding dedicated police officers to support the elementary intermediate campus. Uh, so there'll be one police officer in each. Uh, and then we're adding a special education assistant assessment coordinator, safety and risk management specialist, C and I math specialist and uh, two vocation special ed vocation program. We previously approved the teacher hiring schedule. Uh, you can see that uh, we proposed a 3.25 percent increase on the midpoint, which equates to $1,680 increase for all teachers. Teachers' salaries will begin at 47300 Now we get to the projected budget. Last year's budget was $342.5 million. We have an additional revenue of $40.1 million. In addition, TRS, uh, the legislature passed an increase of funding by the school districts of one and a half percent of your budget to TRS, or one and a half percent of your payroll. And uh, they uh, elected to provide that funding first year. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen on that. So we're going to see a revenue of $386.1 million. However, we're not spending all of that. Uh, we have a budget uh, increase of 9.5% for salary increases, 9.5 million, sorry, 13.6 uh, million for other expenses that we saw on the other sheet, and then the TRS on behalf of 3.5 million, giving us a total budget of 369.1 million. 
uh, resulting in uh, projected surplus of 17 million. Balancing next year's budget. Uh, this is, it's a 7.8% increase in the budget, which is higher than normal. However, if you go back and look at where we've been for the last three years, you overall increase over that three-year period is actually very reasonable. Uh, it, it, it's a 2.9% average over the last three years uh, increase in the budget. Uh, so I think even though this year is rather large, look at it from the context of where we came from before the reduction of funding two years ago, it's actually a very This is the budget. I'm not going to go through this. I will point out the point that uh, Mr. Husbands brought up earlier is even though our funding from the state is affected by our increase in assessed value, we're still receiving 39% of our funds in the, in the general fund from the state. So our funding is split 61% local, 39% our general fund. As we've seen before, uh, the school business is people intensive. It's 88.4% of our budget is payroll and benefits. Uh, the next biggest category is contracted services. The biggest item in this area is utilities. Uh, that's 5.6% of our budget. Supplies and materials is 4.5%. The biggest item in there is fuel. Uh, none of these are surprises. And then in the last category, equipment and other, the biggest item is insurance. Total budget, 369.1 million. Looking ahead to 2014-15, uh, you can see that our projected funding is, as you'll recall, we got 40 million this current year. We're showing we're projecting an increase of only 6.8 million in state and local funding next year. Uh, so we need to we need to take that preserved surplus from last year and carry it over to next year to balance our budget. And we're we don't know whether we're going to receive the 1.5. We may or may not get the 3 million. At this time, we don't know. Uh, but. That if we do, we'll have a projected funding of $26.8 million. Just looking at a pro forma budget, which is uh, give a, assuming a 3% raise, uh, you're looking at uh, a budget in the range of $20 million as really a baseline budget. Is, is this 20.3 uh, of the 26 count the fact that we'll be opening two schools? If you got that. Yeah. Got the so that's in uh, student growth has got the the additional right. We opened two schools this year. Well, yeah, but one of those is kind of the division of labor. Right? I mean, there may be pluses and minuses or whatever, but the, what I'm talking about is there's two new campuses next year. I mean, it's a bigger number. Well, the, 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 main, the, the main increase really comes from of those campuses. Okay, so we do we do have two new. Uh, because basically, but anyway, the, it's the in there. It doesn't really matter. It's yeah, in there. The, the teacher staffing just moves from one. I would suggest the health fund contribution for 2014-15 would be enough. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're correct. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'd say it go up by. Good, uh, but. Anyway, this is a baseline, and this is a pro. So, so, so your point here is just saying if we put the seventeen on the back burner, and well, that's unlike it. other people that won't pay attention to the right. fact that that was front loaded, or maybe they missed it, or maybe they don't care, they got a balance this year. Okay, we're we're still we still got six million dollars worth of right. uh, before we ever even start developing these numbers like. Uh, for example, the health care. Right. And we could, like I said, we may not get the $3 million for TRS contribution. 
or I mean that could eat up that. But this is a good baseline to start with. Exactly. Appreciate you showing that. That's a new part of the budget is looking because of, because of the funding difference, looking out at that, that and helps. planning. Uh, the proposed tax rate, as we mentioned, uh, we wanted to pass along a tax reduction for CISD patrons. We've had our, our financial advisors evaluate this. They have uh, confirmed that we can reduce the tax rate a half cent, and uh, their projection carry on without having to raise the tax, uh, assuming things stay have been as they appear to be. Uh, so we are recommending a half cent reduction uh, to the tax rate, bringing our tax rate to a dollar twenty-eight and a half, cent, uh, and putting us at uh, forty-seven and a half cent lower than thousand five. Finally. Uh, this is the first public hearing tonight. We will hold a second public hearing on August 20th. That is the presentation. Okay, at this time, if there's anyone who'd like to make a comment, please approach the podium, state your name, and comment. Take it. All right, thank you, Mr. Cox. And that concludes our uh, public hearing for our proposed budget. <clears throat> I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present and that this meeting has been duly called and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Time is now 6 3. If you would please stand as Mr. Husbands leads us in the invocation and Dr. Brown in our pledges. You pray with me, please. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, it is obvious the, that we are a very blessed district. We have blessings abounding in our district, not only with our students and our staff, but financial as well. And we know we owe you thanks and the glory for that. Father, we ask that you continue to be with us as we make the decisions for the district, that we use wisdom and discernment and that we keep each and every patron and student in mind as, as as we make these difficult decisions. Father, we be with each of us, keep us safe tonight on our way home, and bless this meeting. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. Keep going with me as we pray to the allegiance of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the city, Texas, one state for God, one Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Item 2A. Secretary, do we have anyone that is. Okay. No citizens participation tonight. Item 3A, approval of the two. I move the approval. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Item 4, Dr. Stockton, do we need an executive session? Uh, no, sir. I move for adjourn. We have a motion for second. adjournment. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. We did all that just to set a record. What was it? Two minutes? I think the prayer lasted longer than.